I will present a bit of an overview of what I'm uh, doing in this period in research. So, uh, so as you can see in the title, uh, so I will talk about uh, yeah creativity-driven science. So uh, starting from uh, over the mountain where I am and across the wave, as I will talk about waves and waves to 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 for biofabrication purpose. So uh, I'm uh, living in Davos on the mountain and, and my, my, uh, my main research area is to uh, develop uh, 3D cell, cell, cellularized construct for, for both in vitro modeling and for uh, clinical application. And uh, I will show a bit uh, the technology uh, that, that uh, I've been uh, using and I'm using recently. So first of all, I would like to introduce a bit on on uh, so my uh, part in the Flamingo project. So I'm part of uh, uh, this European project, uh, which is based on uh, the generation of a, a multi-channel uh, organ on a chip device. And this so Flamingo project is an acronym that which is from pathobiology to sign over on a chip. So driving rheumatoid arthritis for the precision medicine goal. So in our team, we have uh, Banu, uh, our postdoc, which is working on the generation of this uh, uh, organ and chip device. And as our main expertise here at AO Research Institute is in the, in the field of uh, bone and cartilage, what we do is to print and bioprint uh, within this uh, multi-layer organ and chip device, the cartilage and the bone uh, construct of this uh, hierarchically organized uh, uh, tissue model to study, of course, rheumatoid arthritis from uh, patient-derived uh, cells. What we do then is also to bioprint the solution uh, of cells and uh, uh, hydrogel extracellular-like matrix within these channels that you can see here. And so why I put the syringe here? Because this is the main field of application, the main field of research. So I work on development of uh, biofabrication technologies. So starting from that, I want to say that biofabrication uh, is then uh, divided in many, many subfields. And uh, among them, we have bioprinting technologies. And uh, as you can see here in this slide, there are many ways to organize uh, uh, materials and tissue and cells and extracellular matrix in a hierarchically shaped construct in order to recapitulate then the in vitro, uh, the, the in vivo physiological uh, condition. So as you can see here, we have, uh, for instance, selective laser sintering, stereolithography, which are mainly based on uh, uh, lasers, so on light uh, cross-linking approaches. Then we have uh, uh, this uh, kind of 3D printing based on uh, inject uh, with a liquid adhesive supply, which uh, uh, enable the adhesion of a thin layer of powder in order to create pore size and pore shape of a specific uh, Mm, characteristic. Then among them also the more classical 3D printing approach, which is the fusel deposition modeling, also FDM, which uh, I think everyone of you have seen uh, at least uh, in a lab or even TV. Uh, it is part of, uh, you have a plastic filament, uh, mainly a thermoplastic uh, material, which is extruded through a driving wheel and extrusion nozzle, which is then uh, uh, heated at high temperature in order to melt this filament and then uh, the layering and the fusion and solidification of this will allow the generation of this uh, hierarchically uh, built construct. On the other end, we have uh, also uh, 3D plotting. As you can see here, the slurry solution of cells and hydrogel, which can extrude through a thin layer, uh, through a thin needle, uh, the, the bio inks, the, the so-called bio inks. And we have also uh, many other range of uh, technology as the light based technology called two photon polymerization. In this case, the two photon has a very uh, high resolution in terms of uh, patterning cells and creating 
uh, creating a very uh, precise construct at the micron scale. And so on, then the melter to spinning solution and to spinning and so on. Many other uh, that you have, uh, in, you can see in, in literature. Then uh, there is another family, which is the additive manufacturing of uh, mainly 3D scaffold. You can see 3D scaffold that are being used for generation of um, uh, porous construct that can be then infiltrated by cells and uh, extracellular matrix so that after proliferation of the cells, then uh, uh, the scaffold can be uh, cultured in vitro or implanted directly in vivo in order to then uh, uh, generate uh, uh, a new tissue, to regenerate new tissue. As you can see here, this is a scaffold that has been implanted uh, in subcutaneous in a small animal. And after uh, a few weeks of implantation, we can see that uh, there is a vascularization uh, and there is new uh, matrix formation within this uh, inner part of the scaffold. And then after uh, a few weeks and months, uh, we expect that the scaffold will degrade and then the tissue and the organ will then regenerate. This is not only good for, for clinical applications for regeneration of tissue, but also to generate, for instance, high throughput uh, screening system for studying, in this case, for instance, uh, uh, macrophage polarization from uh, pro-inflammatory, anti-inflammatory uh, behavior of cells. Uh, and, uh, and depending on, the, uh, on the, the hierarchical shape that you can create in terms of uh, pore size, pore shape, uh, stiffness, uh, and uh, surface topography of the scaffold and so on. Finally, another application of additive manufacturing for scaffolds is in the, in the field of generation of patient specific, specific or anatomically shaped scaffolds. In this case, was used for the generation of uh, uh, fused uh, of uh, lumbar cage for, for, for fusion here. And an important uh, perspective is the material perspective. So the generation of this bio ink. So when, when we call bio ink, we consider a ink, basically a nitrogel precursor ink that then will be cross-linked and which is loaded with cells. So we have uh, a material that can be, for instance, in this case, uh, 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 cross-link and then solidify after the extrusion. So it should be liquid here and then cross-link and then after the extrusion through, through uh, a light or through a chemical or enzymatical cross-linking. There is also a way to, to, to measure or to tune the material composition in order to have physical entanglement. So we have this spaghetti-like construct, which be, will be then extruded through a nozzle and then uh, this will retain the construct since uh, all this uh, uh, polymer filament are connected one to, each, to one to each other. Of course, there are many uh, things that we need to study. And one of them is of course the rheological properties or so rheology tuning is uh, an important aspect to be considered in order to have an optimal bio ink for generation of uh, tissue models uh, and, uh, and construct and cellularized construct in general. Other opportunities are in the field of um, connecting this uh, uh, extrusion system with the microfluidic or coaxial uh, printing. Uh, and this will then allow the cross-linking of this uh, green solution, for instance, here through the, the the, the, the merging and connection with the two orange solution that you see here. Another opportunity is that given by the support buff uh, application as, as I will show you later. So coaxial and microfluidic middle, again, you have bio ink which flow out and then in this case, the bio ink will be cross-linked through a solution of calcium chloride, which is coaxial to this. And this will, uh, will help the, 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 the gel to retain the structure and to maintain the structural stability of all the construct in many different shapes, as you can see here. The same could happen also in a, in a much more narrow way through a microfluidic uh, nozzle device, which has been also um, very well used recently uh, in the biofabrication field. 
from uh, the support buff printing is also this is also uh, a relatively new technology in which uh, uh, scientists have been using a, a fresh hydrogel solution all around which enable the printing without losing the shape of the construct that you can create. And in particular here, you can see also from this uh, paper from Skyler Scott and colleague from in Science Advance uh, that, that was published also a printing, not in an hydrogel, but in a solution of cells and spheroids. So the, the, the shape was retained. And at the same time, you can create vascularized construct within a very large amount of cells. Last but not least, also another uh, very interesting technology, which has a, a, a very bright future, in my opinion, is the volumetric printing, volumetric bioprinting, which is uh, a rotating system, which we have a, a liquid hydrogel precursor, which is then uh, can be cross-linked by light through this system of mirror, like uh, an optical tomography uh, kind of technology. Then you can generate and cross-link very high cellularized construct in few seconds at a very large scale. And uh, then what, what I want to show you is also the convergence of this bioprinting and biofabrication technology with other field-based biofabrication strategies. So when, what I mean for field-based strategies is uh, strategies which, help, which, uh, in a, which are enabled by extrinsic field like magnetic or light fields. And so the convergence of this technology, for instance, we have recently studied through the bioprinting of an ink, which is also a nanocomposite that contain inorganic particles, in this case, uh, iron oxide particles, which give a bio ink some magnetic properties. So we can use this uh, anisotropically aligned particles through a magnet uh, around the possibility to act as cell destructive material, as you can see here. So the cells that are present in this uh, nanocomposite are able then to align and to fuse into each other. And this is the case of uh, skeletal muscle cells that are able then to fuse and create a uh, um, myotube. Then also another opportunity is to, to use this uh, uh, soft hydrogel, but then to as bio-inspired soft robot. This could be used, of course, to let swim this jellyfish, as you can see here, but also as uh, uh, to open, to pay the way to novel, uh, to novel strategies in terms of mechanotransduction. So if you imagine that you can also uh, create an hydrogel with which is embedded of cells, and then you can stimulate, you can implant uh, or or put it in vitro, and then stimulate remotely or contactless with the. Uh, with the cyclic uh, magnetic uh, fields, and then you can stimulate the cells in order to uh, let them, for instance, differentiate. Another opportunity was also to, to, to mix uh, uh, this uh, uh, nanocomposite, magnetic-based nanocomposite with uh, uh, upconverting nanoparticles, which enable them to visualize the, the hydrogel, even a soft hydrogel under the skin or below a muscle layer. So it opened the way. So this is still very uh, preliminary proof of concept, but uh, it opened the way to endoscopic tracking and manipulation of uh, novel medical device or hydrogel and bio ink for biofabrication purposes. But then uh, <clears throat> just to, uh, to summarize this first part, I would say that this convention, conventional biofabrication technologies have shown a lot of uh, uh, advancement in the last uh, 10 and 20 years, mainly in the field of tissue engineering, regenerative medicine and in vitro diagnostic, but also even in cell therapies and cellular agriculture, which is now an open field for, for research. Uh, but despite of that, I could tell that this technology are even showing a very highly organized construct with very good stability, they are still time consuming. If we well remember, so 3D printing and additive manufacturing are also called the rapid prototyping, but my opinion, it is still not so rapid to move 
or to move directly into the operation room for, for clinical applications. So there is this time consuming issue and there is also an aggressive process, especially for cells, which for instance, the extrusion or the timing for printing could let the cells to senescence or the effect of shear stress that could influence them, uh, uh, determine the cells in terms of viability or even uh, the, the <clears throat> presence of material that can be photochemically activated. All those processes are very complex and aggressive. And uh, from again, from the clinical point of view, they require a very high level of specialization. So if you image in a, in a in clinical purpose, so uh, the medical doctor need always a very high expertise in technology and uh, technologies that work in CAD, CAM and robotic uh, design in order to then generate this uh, ugly article construct. There is, uh, there is indeed a strongly dependence on the material to generate and to optimize and to have a very good bio ink for this uh, generation. Uh, and then there is, uh, last but not least, a lack in recreating physiological environment. If we consider that in a strat of hydrogen like that, we can see cells that are dispensed and dispersed, but they are not so close to each other. So the number of cells is not so high, and they are not, uh, most of the time, they are not so able to communicate uh, each other and to, and to then uh, act as in a, is in a living tissue. So we want something in order to speed up this, uh, uh, this process. So uh, from, from this purpose, I came with a, an idea which uh, we named sound induced morphogenesis or SIM as you can see here. So as I told, yeah, living in the mountain but I come from a Mediterranean area. So in front of the sea, you can see very well that the wave of the sea are able to pattern sand. So if you think at the wave and, and the wave of a liquid, how can you create wave through sound, through a vibration? So why we don't use a pipette to collect the cells, put into a petri dish, into a container, put on top of a chamber or and a speaker, and then let them vibrate. In few seconds, they will form a pattern. They will form a very hierarchical construct. And then we cross link by using light or by using an enzymatic or a pH based uh, uh, method for cross linking. We can customize all the shape by, let's say, quickly changing the frequency and amplitude and the chamber shape of our, of our construct. So it's easy like a, a C wave, but with cells. And then possibly we could also think to stack different layer, one on top of the other, in which we change the cells, change the hydrogel composition, the chemistry, and enhancing even more the hierarchical uh, uh, generation of a tissue. So if we consider this in, in comparison with other uh, existing technology, we can also say that uh, the cell-cell communication is, uh, is much higher because seen what does is to is able to pattern cells, so to aggregate cells. So it is, it is a bioassembly technology, which is able to aggregate cells. So put the cell close to each other within a chair, things that is not so easy with bioprinting. But on the other end, it is also a very gentle and contactless approach. So you don't need to, to use a needle or, or any other robotic system. So it's a fluid that drags the cells in a specific point. Of course, there is a lot of uh, research and literature that you can find. Uh, and then, for instance, this is called uh, technology based on surface acoustic wave, bulk acoustic wave, and based on Faraday waves. So what, what I've been using more is Faraday waves, which is not based on, uh, let's say, uh, piezoelectric system and ultrasound uh, construct, but is based on a frequency generator with a very low frequency uh, wave that, that are generated by this vibrating system and then generate uh, uh, the, the, the Faraday wave on the surface or at the liquid air interface between uh, into our chamber, which is an open chamber. Of course, this is a, a slide that, uh, as you can see, it is the only slide with, uh, with, uh, with an equation that I will show. 
So don't be stressed. I will not show any other more. But uh, just to tell you that uh, we are now able to predict what pattern we can create through this is that is a, a MATLAB visualization and a particle dynamic simulation. And then we are able to, to then uh, create uh, the condition and optimize all the parameters of frequency, amplitude, chamber shape, and volume in order to then uh, generate the pattern that, that we want. Those are a few of the patterns that you can see here. So we can uh, create uh, uh, hierarchically uh, shaped uh, uh, calcium phosphate particles within hydrogels. And by enhancing the, uh, the, 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 the amplitude and the frequency, we can also create something similar to the trabecule of the bone. We can pattern cells within medium. And then you can go from this to this configuration in less than 50 seconds. We demonstrate that uh, metabolic activity and ferrotoxicity of the cells in a quick uh, patterning of the cell doesn't change. We are able then to pattern a large cell aggregate uh, and even doing it in a low throughput, even to uh, a light throughput, uh, multi well plate in few seconds in order to then give a possibility to people uh, to research or to study uh, immune cell forming, cancer invasion uh, within different uh, extracellular matrix. So well, what is my role now is to study uh, the holistic approach uh, of this uh, of this sound induced morphogenesis, not only from the science perspective, as, as you can see here, we are able to, we want to uh, demonstrate that this technology is able to pattern and identify fibrillar network of, of uh, extracellular matrix like collagen or fibrin, but also we want to, of course, aggregate cells, at the micro and mesoscales, but also we want to resurface large area and large tissue at the centimeter scale. If we look from the time perspective, this is also very interesting and uh, not so much investigated till now, uh, is that uh, we can infuse second pattern cells in 2D and 3D, but then what happens if we go to a very long massaging the cells, so stimulating the cells uh, through this uh, acoustic uh, wave? for longer time, so for, for hours and days. So we could also think to trigger a tissue maturation, so to, to, to act on the cell behavior in order to stimulate them toward a maturation or to speed up uh, a functionality uh, of the tissue. So the first application uh, I started to work on was the, the patterning of vascular vasculatures, because vasculature is one of the bottleneck in tissue engineering. So if you want to generate a tissue, a large tissue, then you always have to have a vasculature. If you don't have vasculature, then you don't have uh, vessels, you don't have uh, passage of oxygen and nutrient, and the cells and the tissue will die. So what we did here was to use this way to sound pre-patterning the cells, as you can see here. And then by culturing in vitro, what you see that is that the cells then will slowly, slowly connect each other in a very physiological and mild condition, and then create this hierarchically organized uh, construct with the gradient of, of vasculature, as you can see in real tissues. We are also able then to, uh, as you can see, this is the way we pattern. This is how the cell microcapillary grow. We can create arrays of different uh, large configuration. We can also integrate this patterning of cells and spheroids within, uh, uh, within integrated uh, uh, fluidic device and chambers. And then we can perfuse with the Texas red uh, fluorescent uh, in order to, to check for the perfusion at the large at this large scale and into the microcapillaries all around to check if there is a, a, a functional perfusability of the, of the construct. As you can see here with the cross section of the, of the vessel and the lumen formation, and also all the spot showing the, 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 the fluorescent dye reach also the microcapillaries and all the spheroids around. An important concept that I want to uh, highlight here is that concentration matter. So differently from many of the conventional microfluidic approach in which you have a, a very, uh, very uh, high concentration of cells, 
Uh, this, within a very small, uh, uh, within a very, very small volume. And in this case, for instance, you have uh, 3 million and even more uh, cells per ml. And the cells are able then to arrange each other because they are very packed and forming this uh, randomly organized microcapillary network. On the other end, what we are able to do is to first generate large scale, so more physiologically relevant construct with the uh, same uh, technology. We are able then to define the vessel orientation as you can see here, but also, and most important in my opinion is that we are able to slow down the number of cells to generate a capillary network because, because of this uh, um, local density enhancement that we induce, so the cells, even if they are less than usually, they are able to connect and to communicate each other. So this scale up of the construct while downscaling of the number of cells enable them to go possibly and potentially in the future in the clinical translation much faster than uh, other uh, technologies. This is an example we are also studying is to layering and stacking different layer of uh, hydrogel loaded with cells and hydrogel loaded with the inorganic particle. As you can see here, uh, a first layer loaded with cells uh, and uh, endothelial cells and human methane cells and another one, a pattern with uh, calcium phosphate particle also embedded in hydrogen. And this stacking layer would, would give us the possibility then to create uh, uh, not only the hierarchical uh, organization of, uh, of uh, in this case, bone, but also uh, the, the physiological conditions. So, and the, 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 for instance, in this case, the number of cells and uh, the close enough in order to create capillaries uh, in a specific uh, orientation within this construct. Another way we are also uh, exploring these technologies is is to do uh, drug screening, for instance, in this case, vascularized model. So the idea in this case is to use this, uh, what we call Saturn-like model. So you have a, a planet here, which is uh, considered a cancer, a cancer or patient-specific uh, model. And then all around we pattern uh, endothelial cells in co-culture with uh, pericide. And what we see is that they, will slowly form a capillary network, a, a ring of capillary. And then what we, what we can do is to study this capillary network in a high throughput setup. And this gives us the possibility to study different drugs. And for instance, microcapillary evolution, depending on the uh, anti-cancer drug and anti-angiogenic drug and combination. And find the one that is more useful for a specific uh, therapy for a patient. This is a work we are conducting within uh, the Premurosa ITN uh, Mercury project and also in collaboration with the, the, the cost action strategy. Another uh, possible uh, application is in the field of uh, uh, shaping the extracellular matrix. So this is more at the uh, micro and nanoscale. What we are able to do is to densify the fibrillar network of the extracellular matrix, in this case of fibrin, and in this case of collagen, you can see we are able to densify and to create periodically pattern of uh, this matrix, or even create porous construct, or even create a gradient of density of the matrix. And this could also work as cell instructive material or for application in cancer or to study fibrosis. Uh, another, as I told, application is to study uh, long-term stimulation of cells. And in this case, we use SIM for chondrogenesis, or we could also use uh, uh, even for chondrogenesis to, to, to uh, an approach, uh, a developmentally driven approach based on cell condensation. So we can use sound wave to create cell aggregation and the cell aggregation then uh, possibly could, dri could drive to chondro differentiation. Uh, what our preliminary data have shown from uh, that that uh, if we if if we see that uh, the, the ratio between collagen two and collagen ten with a pattern uh, with a pattern is much higher than with the random, then this is indicative that we are going toward a yarring cartilage opposed to an hypertrophic cartilage. Of course, this is a very preliminary data, but it's very. Uh, interesting and it's very promising for, for the application of this cell condensation into 
approach to, to generate much more mature tissues. Uh, one of the uh, approaches we are using, uh, one of the application we are using for sound induced morphogenesis is also to generate uh, uh, 3D nerve models, for instance, to study chronic pain. And in this case, we are, we are using DRG extracted from large adult animal models, in this case, bovine, and then we pattern this within gel or within uh, medium and let them cluster in. What we can see from this picture is that uh, the SIM uh, clustered, SIM assembled TRG cells is much more close to the native tissue. As you can see, the neuron here in green and in orange are surrounded by glial cells, so the blue spot, the blue dots all around. And this is pretty similar to what we see in the native tissue. And, uh, and pretty different from what we see in the 2D situation or in the randomly organized within, a, within a hydrogen. So this tight and intimate cell cell interaction will for, for sure resemble much more the, the, the in vivo condition. And from this preliminary data, we can also see that uh, even the synchronization of the calcium that we can see from sim pattern neurons is much better than what you can see in a random situation. Uh, another interesting uh, uh, use of the sound technology is on uh, uh, to generate user-friendly and time-effective method for generating reproducible and much more morphologically relevant organoids. So the organoid board is uh, indeed very exciting, and state or, but the state of the art of the organoid uh, is shown here, and this it represents. Uh, it is represented by uh, morphologically different uh, uh, sample one from each other, which is not only the morphology itself that is affected, but also the diffusion of a drug or a therapy through this. So then uh, the idea is to first generate uh, through SIM a uh, much more reproducible organoid and also a morphologically relevant organoid, which could go not only uh, toward the drug discovery or disease modeling, but even in the, in the far the future, we can envision to go for uh, for for transplantation or for for application in uh, regenerative medicine. So just to uh, finalize here, I would say that this is a fast, mild, and contactless approach. It is user friendly. It offers a high level of customization with high scalability, complexity in terms of morphology, uh, it is possible. And then uh, it, it is a nice platform for biological modeling and uh, we envision the possibility to use it for, for clinical application. It is a platform for stimuli responsiveness as indeed for the application in soft robotic, uh, dynamic multicellular system and uh, for sure in synthetic biology. What uh, I want to now in a in few minutes uh, uh, highlight is that uh, uh, we have not only uh, worked on the research side, but we have also uh, developed a, a, a device in the last few years, a device and a set of biomaterial and labware um, and through uh, a NEO development incubator funding. And uh, so this activity of development have been uh, then uh, culminated with the, uh, another, another study, which is an in vivo assessment via subcutaneous implantation to demonstrate a proof of concept in vivo that this vascular anastomosis is possible. We have been working on the translation of the market. So this is a bit uh, the, the story of the, my last few years. So we have submitted a couple of patents, one on the method and one on the, on the, on the device itself. Funded uh, and licensed uh, the, the button to uh, uh, a startup company, which is Mimix Biotherapeutics. And then uh, Mimix went in the market uh, uh, by the end of uh, 2021 with uh, the product that you can see here is Semantics. And this is a bit uh, uh, how Semantics look like. This is Semantics, uh, so Mimix web page, and uh, how is uh, uh, comparing an extrusion bioprinting with the uh, with, uh, with, uh, uh, SIM patterning. So the speed of, of generation of the patterning is much, much higher and, uh, and, uh, and even the, the area that you can cover. 
This is just an example, but for sure the area and the size of the patterning is not uh, influenced by, uh, so the time is not influenced by the, the, the area that you can cover. And now... Uh, Mimics Biotherapeutics introduces Symatex, the next generation biofabrication technology using sound-induced morphogenesis in answer to the world's most urgent social and healthcare challenges. Everything is shape. Everything is function. Blood vessels, the branches on a tree, desert dunes, an embryo. Every living system is a kaleidoscope of patterns. Controlling pattern formation is the path to understanding and replicating nature, morphogenesis, and the beauty of life. Mimix has engineered a process which mirrors nature's design through the use of acoustic waves. We orchestrate cell combinations in a gentle physiological environment to initiate controlled cell-to-cell -cell communication in order to trigger tissue morphogenesis and functionality. With Symatix, this cutting-edge technology becomes accessible to all healthcare and scientific communities. Symatix opens up a world of opportunities, be it in every aspect of life science, material science, or cellular agriculture. Symatix brings the building power of nature to your laboratory. We are Mimix. And with this, I would like to thank you all. And thanks all my team, of the Sound Guided Tissue Regeneration Lab. Uh, yeah, so uh, thank you Tizana for this presentation. Uh, I'm sure there will be some questions. Um, if you have a questions, uh, the first uh, and most common way to ask it is through chat. Uh, just write in the chat your questions and the designer will answer it. And the second option is uh, you will find the raise hand button on your bottom or the right side. I'm not sure, but if you click on it, uh, I'll give you permission uh, to speak. So uh, do, not, do not hesitate to, to ask Tizana uh, question. So what I forgot to mention uh, earlier, uh, Tizano is member of uh, Flamingo project. So maybe uh, would you like to say us more about this project in general, just a couple of sentences for persons yeah. like me who actually never heard anything about it. Yeah, so Flamingo is a, is a wonderful European consortium, which is based on, uh, on the study of the rheumatoid arthritis. And uh, it is based on an organ on a chip uh, approach and uh, on a modular approach. So it is not only a, 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 a microfluidic device in which we simulate a tissue, but it's also based on, uh, on many uh, many devices uh, that are coupled one to the other to form a, a multi-layer construct, which can simulate many tissue um, uh, one to the other. The beauty of this is that first target the patient specific and the personalized medicine. And second, that uh, there is everything is implemented uh, technologically through uh, bioprinting approach. So everything is automated and uh, even the, the, all the constructed are generated by each partner uh, are automated uh, into, into uh, an extrusion based bioprinting, which is able to dispense in each channel the, of the multi-layer construct, uh, all the, all the, all the uh, cells and extracellular matrix of the patient. So this is a, a way to, hierarchically generate uh, uh, a tissue which resemble much more uh, what uh, we have seen till now. And uh, the, the way to use uh, organ on a chip, uh, a fluidic system, it also allow uh, a very good readout uh, for, for, for studying better the, the disease. Okay, I think uh, we have first question in the chat. Uh, if you click on it, uh, you should be able to see it. Okay, so, so what is the, the usual or optimal percentage of cell of, uh, in bio -in? So basically, depending on the technology that you use, the, there is a, an optimal percentage of cells. So there is no one 
specific. Usually when you start to print, depending on the tissue, depending on the kind of cells, depending on the stiffness and the, and the properties of the material, then you have to optimize the, the, the cell concentration within the gel. And uh, of course, uh, it is a matter of, uh, let's say, calibration cure. So you, you start to print and then you start to optimize uh, through a, a, a design of experiment process or through, uh, or through uh, uh, let's say, calibration cure, all this, uh, all this, uh, all this component. And how many cells survive the shear stress during injection during 3D printing? So, yeah, that, that is one of the main issue, but then uh, I should say it's not the, the, the biggest issue. So has been in the past, but people in the last few years have been working hard in order to generate hydrogel, which are very liquid during the extrusion and then start to solidify after the extrusion. So the shear stress, it is true. It affects the number, it affects the cells, but it's not really, I mean, if you put very, High amount of cells, then uh, then uh, of course they, they will uh, die because of the shear stress. But otherwise, uh, it is not uh, really uh, a big issue. I guess the, one of the biggest issue in the conventional way to to, to bioprint cells is the one related to to the long term patterning. So while let's say for for volumetric uh, bioprinting or with uh, uh, sound induced morphogenesis or other more um, bioassembly process, you have that the patterning in a large in a large area uh, can happen can happen in, uh, in all in few seconds or in few minutes. If you want to generate a bioprinted construct uh, with a, with a nozzle, then uh, of course you could have an higher resolution or fine tuning of the shape. But on the other end. Uh, uh, it requires longer time, which could then influence the cell in terms of, in term of uh, senescence or in terms of uh, stability along the process. Uh, in magnetic bio ink art, some interaction of the magnetic nanoparticle with cells. Yeah, indeed. So depending on, uh, yeah, in, in our case, we had this interaction and we wanted the interaction. So basically what, what we wanted was to, to, to have these magnetic uh, roads, which act as a guide for the cells. So if you have an hydrogel, which is randomly organized, and then you have this uh, micrometer scale roads, anisotropically oriented, then you can use them in terms of topography, in terms of stiffness, properties in order to align the cells. Once they are aligned, they will feel each other and then possibly depending on the study, depending on the cell, could act in terms of uh, organization, in terms of uh, remodeling of the construct. Uh, I think you forgot to answer one question. I can repost it again. Uh, yeah, is there any particular reason you opt for cow DRG? Ah, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's also a very good question. So uh, basically what we want, what is our aim is to move to uh, a model which is, uh, which is, for, which is much more uh, uh, physiologically relevant because we want to move to study chronic pain in human. So the idea is then to move from a small animal or embryonic uh, uh, to, to large animal. And then large animal could be represented by, by cow in this case. And then of course, so large animal and adult animal represent a very um, high complexity, but, uh, but it is a biological complexity that we have to face in order to then uh, uh, study, study uh, pain. Okay, uh, we have, ah, yeah, another question. Are the cells in the pattern created by seam organized in 3D or in 3D structure? Yeah, this is also a very good question and important question. So what, what, what seam does is to aggregate the cells in specific points. So then of course there are effects of gravities depending on the tuning of the hydrogen that you have. 
and then the cell could then uh, aggregate and position on the bottom of the surface. But then depending on the uh, hydrogel properties and uh, chamber properties, then you can uh, retain this 3D shape instead of the 2D construct. For instance, then the 2D or 3D is always, uh, or 2D, 2.5D is always related to, uh, for instance, considering uh, uh, how deep you want to study the the, the physiological uh, the physiological condition of the of, of these cells. So for sure, the stacking of the cell, so the stacking of layers of patterning will create a much more uh, macro scale 3D construct. But even in a, in a in one single layer, it is possible to pattern at the same time uh, single cell population and uh, uh, larger spheroids or organoid, and this give already a kind of three-dimensionality to, to all the uh, environment. Uh, we still have time for uh, some questions. So as I mentioned earlier, if you have a question, just write it in the chat or uh, raise your hand uh, with a button and I'll give you permission to speak. So don't be afraid. Yeah, we have one more question. <laughs> okay, so what's the reason I start to work in AO? Well, I think as every researcher in the world, I've been doing research, loving doing research, and then uh, at a certain point of my life, uh, I've been uh, looking for, for, for a place uh, where, where I can do my, my uh, my science, uh, and at that moment, I was uh, uh, so after a, a PhD in uh, Barcelona and a postdoc in London, uh, uh, I found on the web uh, a position, open position in, uh, in in Davos, in Switzerland, and uh, you know, not scared by the the geography around uh, and from my uh, uh, Mediterranean soul. Uh, I moved to, to Davos because I think uh, it is uh, it is a, a very uh, interesting and very uh, nice place to do research. And I and I met uh, a very great family, uh, a very supportive environment for 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 doing my 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 research and my science. <laughs> uh, do we have more questions? Uh, if not, uh, I would suggest to conclude uh, the webinar. So uh, thank you every, everyone uh, from my side for uh, joining our webinar. Um, maybe Sasha, if you want to say something uh, to close the uh, webinar. Um, uh, I would just like to thank Tiziano uh, for taking his time on Friday evening uh, luckily, it's raining everywhere in Europe, I guess, also in Switzerland. Here in Ljubljana, definitely it's raining and it's boring weather. So it, I was very uh, happy that uh, I could uh, attend this, this lecture. It was very interesting. We will That's now put this, this lecture on YouTube so people will be able to see it later if they um, missed it. But in any case, Tiziano... Thank you very much for this very interesting talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks and for inviting me. Yeah. Okay. And I wish everyone a great weekend. Yeah, great weekend also from my side. Bye. Bye. Bye.